Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I am here today at the Rock Island Auction House, taking a look at some of the guns that they're going to be selling in their December of 2015 auction. And I figured we could use this opportunity to continue sort of an informal series I've been doing through a number of these videos on really, really tiny pistols. So the smallest pistols ever made were a 2.7 millimeter Calibri, and they were made by a guy named Franz Fahnel, who was an Austrian uh, gun maker. And while he made those, and they, they kind of hold the record for the smallest, they weren't the most popular. They were ludicrously unpowerful. And uh, what was actually more successful for him was a 4.25 millimeter cartridge. So that's actually kind of the, the bullet diameter anyway, is, is in the realm of something that we would use today. That's 17 caliber. Now, the cartridge that he developed uh, was the, it was 4.25 by 10.6 millimeters. So it's pretty tiny. This was the first pistol that he developed to use it. And it's called the Erika, E-R-I-K-A. It's a little uh, semi-automatic blowback pocket pistol or purse pistol. And these were developed uh, in the years prior to World War I. I'm not sure of the exact production dates uh, or frankly the exact production numbers, although at least a couple thousand of these were made. Now the actual ballistic potential of this cartridge, well it fired a 12 to, to 15 grain projectile at about 800 feet per second, so fast. Uh, but that gave it a grand total of 17 to 21 foot-pounds of energy. So in comparison that would be about a quarter of the energy you would get from a 25 ACP cartridge. So very, very weak. Now not so weak as to be a complete joke, uh, probably not a an, practical or effective defensive caliber, but you, you could actually hurt yourself or someone else shooting them with this. So you do have to be at least a little careful. I think primarily these were popular for people who wanted something for protection, but they didn't want something that was loud or had recoil or was difficult to operate. The slide on this is, is fairly easy to, to run because it is such a tiny cartridge. So they were actually decently popular. Um, the guns, however, that made this, this caliber a little more popular were the men's pistols um, that were made in 4.25 millimeter after World War I. So we actually did a video on one of those a little while back if you're interested in it. But I think this thing's so tiny you can probably not make out anything of it from back there. So why don't we take a closer look at it? So it's interesting, the Erica actually looks, tends to look bigger in photographs than it really is. In reality, this thing is like the size of a, a Colt vest pocket pistol in general. Um, and despite its very awkward appearance, it's actually one of the easiest, or one of the, the best fitting of these little tiny pocket pistols to hold. Um, I believe, and even my hands are a bit big for this design, but I believe the idea is that your index finger goes on the trigger, your middle finger goes on this scallop, and then your two remaining fingers can clasp around the actual grip. And that, that's actually not that bad of a way to hold this thing, kind of remarkably. Now, there are both long and short-barreled Erica's. This is the longer-barreled version. Um, in total, this thing weighs about eight and a half ounces. And even at the widest, at the grips, it's about 0.7 inches wide, which is going to be like 15 millimeters. Um, it is an incredibly flat and compact pistol. It does actually have sights on it right there. Not that those would really be of all that much use, but uh, one of the most interesting features from the outside is the location of the magazine. It's actually located between the trigger and the grip. There's a button here on the back that allows us to eject the magazine. There it is, holds six cartridges. And it's got a little heel release uh, cut in it right there. So that's our magazine location. This is simply a, a straight blowback. There we go. It's a straight blowback pistol. There's our action. Uh, it does use the firing pin as the ejector. So when that action opens all the way up, you can see that the firing pin kicks out there. It's I would say that's all there is to it, but why don't we go ahead and take uh, these screws out, and pull the side plate off, and take a look at the internals, because they're pretty cool and just remarkably tiny. All right, so looking inside, 
the Erica here, we can actually get a pretty good idea of how it works. So let's start by just pointing out that this is clearly, this whole frame is a, a single casting. Uh, it's nice and rough in here. They just have this cavity for weight reduction. And then in the areas where they're actually going to be putting parts, they machine uh, nice flat surfaces. So with that in mind, we can take a look at how this actually functions. It's a pretty basic system here. We've got a bar coming from the hammer right here. And this flat surface pushes on this pin. So right, right there, if I keep pressing, I will push this pin backwards. This piece is going to rotate on this pin. And so when I push this backwards, this end goes forward. And that is our sear engagement right there. When this piece clears that notch, that releases the hammer right here, which will then pivot forward around its pin like that, strike the firing pin, and fire a cartridge. Now, the, the mechanism for propelling the hammer, if I take this guy off, we can see that there is actually a plunger right here, and there's a little coil spring inside. That's what's pushing on the hammer. So typically, you, you more often have some sort of uh, flat spring or or a different type of actual spring pushing on the hammer. In this case, because the internals are so small, this is the most practical way to have a spring pushing on the hammer. Now, this uh, crook-shaped spring up here is actually just to put pressure on the safety, which is here. This pin has some flats on it so that when it's in the safe position, it prevents the hammer from going anywhere. And when it's in the fire position, the hammer can move. This spring is just there to act as a detent to hold the safety in whichever position you put it in. Our trigger guard, of course, is this separate piece. Fits in there. I bumped it out earlier. Um, you'll notice we have a cut here. This uh, provides us a positive stop for the trigger. So the trigger has this wire spring pushing it forward, and then that cutout prevents it from going too far forward. Magazine well is obviously right here. Our recoil spring is captive above the barrel. So if we look at the muzzle, you can see that there's a, a screw right there. To remove the recoil spring, you would undo that screw and take the spring out the front. Um, there's also a screw here that it holds the barrel assembly onto the frame, and I'm not going to get into taking that apart. So the one other piece I haven't mentioned is this one. This is actually what forces our trigger mechanism to reset. So the trigger in normal use is going to be sitting right here. When you pull it back, it will, as I showed, fire. And when it fires, this little peg on the side of the hammer spring is going to push this piece forward like that. And then the bottom tip here pushes the end of the trigger bar down, which disconnects it from this pin and resets it. So that's, that's what forces this to be a semi-auto pistol. Well, thank you for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Got a chance to take a look at another interesting and, and ludicrously tiny pistol today. So if you'd like to own this one yourself, uh, check the link in the description text below. That will take you to Rock Island's catalog page. You can see their descriptions, their pictures, and uh, make a bid online or come down here in the auction in person to participate. Thanks for watching.